Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So today is a different style video because it's the story of my life. So through the multiple questions that you guys ask in the comment section under each video, well, I realized that you guys want to get to know me a little more. So today is that day. I'll be talking about my early life, my studies, my family, my girlfriend, my dog Mia. We're going to move on to how I started in the detailing world. Of course, how I started my YouTube channel. We'll discuss uh, my multiple vehicles that I had through the years. So you'll see pictures and videos of those. So from my very first car all the way up to my latest car. And we're also going to talk about my days as an automotive journalist. So books and magazines and a bunch of cool stuff that uh, you guys might not have known. And of course, I'm going to take your questions as well. So without further ado, stay tuned. Let's go ahead and start the show. So hey guys, I'm Pan. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys are having a great day. So today is a different style video, as I said, because we're going to dig into my life. So you guys are going to get to know the man behind the YouTube videos. So let's dig right into it. By the way, guys, show me your support. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button that's under this video. And that way you'll subscribe to my channel and never miss my future videos. So, well, I'm Pan the Organizer, also known as Pandelis Moskopoulos. That's my full first name and last name. So my first name is Pandelis and my last name is Moskopoulos. All my friends and family call me Pan, hence the name Pan the Organizer. So yes, that's part of my real name. It's my nickname. Uh, it's of Greek origin. So I'm 38 years old as of this video. So I was born in 1981 here in Montreal, Canada. And uh, while well, my parents, my dad is from Greece, so he immigrated to Canada in the uh, 1970s and of course met my mom. My mom is French Canadian because she's from the province of Quebec. So that's a province on the east coast of Canada and we're from the city of Montreal. Uh, so as soon as I started to grow up, well, I learned three languages, so English, French and Greek. So I went to uh, Greek school when I was young, so from uh, kindergarten all the way up to the sixth grade of primary school. So I learned uh, Greek, English and French, of course. So speaking, writing, talking, all that good stuff. I come from a multicultural background, so I think that's cool. Uh, and then, well, my parents, what about my parents? Uh, it was a very strict household, yes, so uh, very strict rules and they demanded a lot from me. Um, those of you who come from a uh, immigrant family background, you can probably relate to this. Very, very demanding, my father that is. Um, he lost his father when he was pretty young, so had to provide for the family. He uh, started actually working as an electrician at the age of 12 in Greece. Imagine that, 12 years old and you're providing for your family, so uh, well, hats off to the man. Uh, he worked like 48 years out of his life, very strong worker, and passed on, uh, passed all that good stuff on to me. So very strong family values, work ethics, and all that good stuff. Uh, so uh, what else? Um, well, many of you have noticed that in my videos, I look kind of tall. Well, that's because I am. So I'm six feet, three inches tall. That's about a meter 91. Uh, and I weigh 240 pounds. So uh, kind of a big boy, right? So it's pretty cool because it allows me to reach the rooftops of many of the vehicles that I detail. So that's an advantage. Uh, what else? Next, my studies, uh, I went to a university, of course, in uh, health science and genetics. So I have a background in uh, science. I went to the uh, medicine faculty of my local university and did studies there. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I don't necessarily share all of these things in my videos, but today is that day where you guys are going to learn all this cool stuff about me. Um, so yeah, studies was always very important for my family and I always excelled in school. So um, usually top of the class or very close to winning multiple prizes through the years, student of the year, best general average, best grades. Uh, and all that good stuff. So um, yeah, if you have kids out there, if you're older, encourage them to do well in school. It's always a good thing. And if you are a student, well, hats off because it's a lot of work. Uh, but eventually you'll get through it. You'll be fine. Don't worry. As we get older, we notice all these things. We stress a lot when we're younger. Um, but things do get better as you get older, especially if you put the time and the work uh, needed. You guys will do well as well. So what's next? My family. Well, as I said, so I have a father and a mother. They've been married for uh, all, all over 40 years. We celebrated their 40th anniversary, if I remember correctly, last year. I'm not that good with dates, guys. Um, but yeah, very strong family values. So my dad, like I said, he's from Greece. My mom is from Canada. 
the French-speaking province of Quebec. So uh, they met in the 70s and they had me in 1981. So I'm the first child. Uh, we're two children in the family, so I have a brother. Uh, he's 34 and his name is Andreas. Everybody calls him Andrew and you've seen him in a, a recent video. So he's a, a great guy. Um, if you've seen him in previous videos, drop a like in the uh, like section down below if you want to see him again. Uh, we get along very well. He's a great brother to have. He also has the same values as I do. Strong worker, um, very good person. Um, and, and I'm honest when I say this, he's a genuinely nice person. Uh, we don't look alike, which is the funny thing. Uh, you'd kind of believe that we're adopted, but we're not. Same parents. Uh, he just retains more, I guess, from my dad's side. So he has darker skin tone. He's shorter with the uh, brown hair. And I um, got the height from my mom's side. All the men were over six feet on her side and lighter colored hair and all that good stuff. Uh, what else? Okay, my girlfriend. Her name is Isabel. You also have seen her in, uh, I think, one video. Yes, the one where we spoke about which uh, fragrance for the vehicle, for air fresheners, do women prefer. So she's a great girl. We've been together now for over eight years. Yes, honey, I got that right. Um, met her in 2011 and she's been a great partner to have, uh, to be honest. Uh, she's five years older than me, so I went after a cougar. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, well, she doesn't look her age because she looks very young, so she's 44 at the moment. Almost going on her 45th anniversary. She has great plans to celebrate that. Uh, she's a world traveler, so she got me into travels. By the way, you can see all my travel vlogs on my channel. That's this side thing that I also do because I do different style videos as well. Uh, electronics and travel, so not only detailing videos. Um, so yeah, she got me into traveling and, uh, well, we're going to Portugal. So depending on when you see this video, I'll probably be in Portugal enjoying the, uh, the sun over there because here in Canada, we're already in colder weather. Um, don't get me wrong. I prefer colder weather. I don't really like uh, super hot temperatures. That's not my thing. I'm from the great white North, as they say, and I enjoy that. Uh, the only thing I don't like though is our crazy winters. As you guys know, uh, we have tons of of snow and cold here in Canada, but uh, hey, that's part of uh, the thing of where we live. What else can I say? Oh, my dog Mia. So we uh, adopted her in roughly three years ago. Yep, yeah, in uh, 2016, in the summer of 2016, if my memory serves me right. Uh, we rescued her from a dog shelter called the SPCA, close to where I live, because uh, we thoroughly believe in giving animals a second chance. And uh, this one was just a gem. As soon as I saw her, I fell in love. I'm uh, typically allergic to cats and dogs, but this one here is hypoallergenic. There's not really such a thing as hypoallergenic animals, but you're, you're less prone to have allergic reactions. So she doesn't shed hair, which is also important for my OCD, because I like cleanliness all over my life. So not only for cars, but also in my home. Hopefully you guys can see through the clips that it's always pretty clean in here because I obsess with cleaning. I do the, uh, the cleaning, by the way, in my home. I like every surface and every area in my living spaces to, to be pretty clean. So um, yeah, that's part of the name of Pan the Organizer. So many of you guys have asked why Pan the Organizer. That's because I like organizing every aspect of my life and sharing my passions with you guys. So whether it's cleanliness, organizing the family's budget, working on vehicles, making sure that every living space and working space is optimized, tidy and organized, well, that's my thing. People have noticed all my life that I like organizing, making decisions. I'm more of a leadership type personality, so a leader. Um, and yeah, I like to make uh, good decisions, hopefully for the, uh, the family life and help improve our situation and always go forward in life. So by watching my videos, hopefully I instill some of my values onto you guys. And also I pass on my passions for my uh, different uh, things that I like. So car detailing, electronics, uh, computers, traveling, all that good stuff, even budgeting. It's very important um, to make to keep track of your budget because if you do, if you know your expenses, your income, your outgoing money, and all that kind of good stuff, well, you're going you're only going to improve as you're going to be aware of uh, the money that's coming in and out of your bank account. So um, yeah, I also have a video on that if you guys want to check it out, how to do a budget. I think that's very important. And uh, well, that's the knowledge that my mom passed on to me. So organizing budget, making everything clean. So I got a bit of both parents, took uh, the best of both worlds and uh, tried just to be a good human being, right guys? So what's next now? 
how did I start detailing? So that's a uh, very, very common question that I get. So I'm 38 now and I've been detailing for over 22 years because I started when I was 16. So uh, my dad bought me my uh, first car. It was a used 1990 Toyota Tercel DX. So more on that later when I talk about all the vehicles that I've owned in my life. You're going to see pictures and videos. Um, so yeah, for my uh, graduation of my high school. So uh, he decided to get me my first vehicle as I had my driver's permit as soon as I was 16, which was the legal age for driving in the province where I live here in Canada. And I wanted my independence early on. So you guys want to go out, enjoy a night uh, around the town with your friends, with your girlfriends uh, and all that good stuff. Yeah, so uh, it was pretty cool. I was lucky enough uh, that he gave me that gift. Uh, it was a used vehicle, but still for me, it was my pride and joy, guys. Um, I'm sure you can relate to your first vehicle. Um, and if it's your first vehicle right now, I'm sure you're taking great care of it, especially if you're watching my videos. That tells me that you guys like detailing. So how I got into detailing? Well, essentially when he gave me the vehicle as a surprise, uh, the following day, he also gave me uh, just a regular bucket, a sponge and dishwashing liquid. And he said, well, that's how you wash a car because that's how he had learned how to do it. And he tried to pass that knowledge on to me. So being very curious by nature, remember I did scientific research. So I'm always asking questions and digging for procedures and trying to figure out how things work. So uh, quickly, I, I said to myself, that doesn't make any sense. The dishwashing liquid that my mom uses in the kitchen to uh, wash dishes is the stuff that I use to wash my vehicle. That doesn't make any sense because those are strong degreasers and uh, they made the, uh, the finish look very dull. So I knew there had to be a better way. Back in the uh, 90s, well, <laughs> the YouTube didn't exist yet. So all we had was a couple of forums, dial-up modems to go on the internet. Remember that, guys? Um, and so, yeah, digging for information was a bit more complicated, but uh, I eventually found a couple of forums uh, back in the early days when they were discussing uh, auto detailing. And I quickly figured out that, yes, you needed a dedicated car shampoo, ideally pH neutral, all that kind of good stuff. Also, what do you do to protect your vehicle? I started learning about decontamination stages. Those were the early days of the clay bars and uh, paint polishing techniques. So I was mostly self-taught. And eventually in the early 2000s, I uh, kind of got a crash course with a, a professional detailing expert who was giving courses about detailing the very first guy in Quebec. And uh, those were my early uh, journalist, uh, automotive journalist review days. So more on that in just a few seconds. So yeah, so on and so forth. I started um, well, learning all the basic techniques on how to clean and detail cars and I immediately got the bug. So it kind of was awesome for my OCD because I liked everything clean and organized around me, even at a young age. And so taking care of my car was only natural for me and I uh, enjoyed the process. So I could spend hours just washing, cleaning. Back in the day, we had Armor All, if you guys remember that we'd put all over our dashes and that was the super greasy, oily, super um, glossy finish. That wasn't really good for the eyesight when you're driving, uh, but those were the good old days. We didn't really have microfiber towels in the early 90s. Uh, what we had were more of those terry cloths, which aren't that great today, but hey, we also had chamois, those synthetic chamois or the uh, real genuine chamois to dry the vehicles. We also don't use that. We've moved on to microfiber, right guys? Uh, but those were the tools that we had back then. So I was thoroughly enjoying the process. And as probably many of you detailers out there, or even weekend warriors, I started offering uh, detailing services to family, to friends, uh, to neighbors. So they'd watch me uh, detail cars for hours and hours. And of course the uh, classic joke, hey, when you're done cleaning that car, you can do mine as well. So, uh, well, I actually took them uh, on their word and I said, yeah, I'll do it. So they were super pleased and word to mouth, the uh, word spread out pretty quickly that I was doing a very thorough job. And it was a benefit for me as well because while I'm detailing, I, I forget about everything else, any worries, any troubles, any issues that you guys have in your life. I'm sure you can relate. When we're detailing, we're focusing so much on the task at hand that it actually made me relax. So I found detailing very soothing. I'd put on some tunes and uh, back in the day we didn't have wireless headsets but on a small radio and just enjoy the day detailing the car and of course seeing the uh, customer or the person's reaction 
to the final result. So when you're unveiling the final results, the person sees their pride and joy, which uh, their vehicle is typically their second most expensive, uh, their second biggest expense in their life after their home. So of course, uh, the ones who take care of their vehicles or who give them to detailing professionals to being taken care of, that means that their car is very important to them. So seeing the smile on their face, seeing their personalities light up when they see the, the end result on their vehicle, I mean, hey, that on its own is worth a lot. Um, and so that's it. So eventually in the early 2000s, I uh, got part of the Nissan Club because I um, had another vehicle that I'll talk about very soon. And so I started detailing the cars of the club and the club members and so on and so forth. So uh, that spread like wildfire and that really started increasing the number of people who wanted me to detail their vehicles. And so I would post on the uh, car forums different pictures of the before and after of every step. So I guess that was leading to the YouTube days. So even earlier on, I understood that people wanted to see the before and after pictures of the, uh, the vehicles. So that was the early days of digital cameras as well in the early 2000s. Um, and so that's how I started to create a name for myself and of course increase the, the reputation. And uh, well, to this date, I mean, I've done thousands of vehicles very easily. Um, a little less now because I have, of course, another job. So detailing is not my main job. It's a kind of a, high, a side hustle or a side gig if you want. Um, and it's very important to me because YouTube is a big part of my life. I like to call myself a YouTuber now. So um, as you guys know, well, or if you don't know, we currently have one of the biggest car detailing channels on YouTube, Pan the Organizer. So again, more on that in a few minutes. So bear with me, guys. Hopefully you're enjoying this, by the way, if that's the case. Smash the thumbs up button to show me your support. Uh, by the way, at any moment, if you have any further questions for me that you'd want me to answer in a future video, you can drop those questions in the comment section under the video. Um, and so that's it for the detailing. So that's how I started. So word to mouth, just doing um, neighbors' cars, family cars, eventually moving on to doing the uh, cars of a um, uh, forum members of a car uh, forum from Nissan that I was a part of back then. And then, well, just it, it, it took off and I started doing vehicles for professionals, for doctors, for lawyers, cars for collections, uh, even some cars for uh, museum expositions. So I got to detail quite a uh, few special cars <laughs> in my life. So uh, it's cool because I'm a car guy. So you're, you're going to notice this, which uh, leads me now to the next uh, common question, which is how did I start my YouTube channel? So guys, this is a big part of it for me. Um, it was an important moment. So in 2016, so we're in the winter now of 2016, I'm having uh, lunch with my girlfriend at a restaurant. And well, she told me at one point, you're so passionate about detailing. And she had never met at that point somebody that was so OCD with detailing and the, that would clean their cars two to three times a week and who would detail other people's cars and spend hours and hours and still have that smile on their face. So she said, you have something special there. Why don't you share your passion with an audience and make YouTube videos? So I had been following a, a few vloggers or other detailing channels on YouTube that I absolutely loved. And I would watch them religiously every single day or as soon as they'd release new videos. And she saw how much I enjoyed that. She knew I had a special personality. And um, well, the fact that I also speak English, French, and Greek, well, I could make videos in French and English. So, well, that really resonated um, inside me and that struck a chord. So I decided to take a leap of faith, buy a crazy equipment. I think I spent like 16,000 Canadian dollars on equipment because I wanted to start at a higher level. So good cameras, good mics, um, recording stuff, tripods, uh, computer to edit and all that kind of good stuff. I had been studying for about a year, uh, self-taught again online how to do uh, some video editing, at least the basic stuff. So hopefully you guys can see this through my videos. I always try to improve the quality of my videos. And so, um, yeah, I got that equipment and well, uh, lo and behold, late April 2016, I think my first video was on April 27, 2016, I launched Pan the Organizer. So how the name came across, well, as you guys heard earlier on in this video, I like organizing every aspect of my life. So um, Isabel, my girlfriend, she's the one who actually said, well, you should call yourself Pan the Organizer because you pretty much organize everything uh, around your life uh, and you even organize people's lives or at least help to do so and give them good tips and tricks and techniques and all all that good stuff. 
So uh, it was only natural for me, I guess, to call myself Pan the Organizer. So I started uh, doing videos and I'm happy to say that in over three years that I've been doing this now, because at the moment um, that you're probably watching this video, we're talking uh, September 2019. So just over three years since I started my channel and I haven't skipped a single week of uploads yet. So making YouTube videos is very demanding, very time consuming. For those of you who are wondering, a typical video or detailing video will take me anywhere from 10 to 15 hours from beginning to end. So the detailing work, all the video editing, the shooting of the video, putting that all online, making the text for the description, getting the links, putting it on Facebook, Instagram, and doing all the promotion on different social media so you guys can enjoy and watch it. Well, that takes a lot of time. Um, I'm close to 450 videos right now, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, do the math. That's a lot a lot of hours spent making these videos, but um, I enjoy this, I think, pretty much more than anything else right now. I'm so passionate about just sharing my passions and knowledge with you guys, my viewers, and hopefully this translates in my videos and you guys get the bug as well. I know through the comments that you guys thoroughly enjoy detailing as well. And while one of my objectives and main goals is to make that passion, to, well, to share that passion with you guys, and hopefully you go out there and enjoy detailing your own vehicles. And if you're a detailing professional, we'll just keep up to date on all the latest products, tools, techniques, equipment, and all that good stuff. And uh, even tips and tricks on how you guys can start your own detailing businesses, as I have videos um, about those as well. And so, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, the cool thing about the uh, YouTube channel. And I'm proud to say, for those of you who might not know this, that we're past, uh, we're almost at a third of a million subscribers. So currently uh, on the day of this recording, which is uh, September 17, uh, September 18, we're at 325,000 subscribers and over 34 million views uh, on YouTube. So this makes it easily one of the biggest and fastest growing detailing channels on YouTube. So I thank you guys because without you, of course, all of this wouldn't be possible. I'd just be this uh, lonely guy sharing my passion and knowledge and nobody to watch it. So through your feedback, well, I kept improving and here we stand today. Um, I'm blessed with a super positive audience and that's you guys. So again, thank you. Um, I said before that I was a car guy and I'm not joking and let's dig right into it. So what cars did I own? Well, first of all, I had a 1990 Toyota Tercel DX. So my uh, dad bought that for me. I was 16 years old. And uh, so, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed using it. Uh, I think it was 1997. That would be right, because I was born in 81. So for my high school graduation, I took great care of it. You're going to see pictures on the screen. And uh, well, in the late 90s or early 2000s, it was also the Fast and the Furious movies. So that started an onslaught of uh, a... Um, car modifications movement, I should say. So the uh, car mods world and I, uh, well, I jumped into it uh, head first. I dove right into that world and I indulged. So I had neons under the vehicle. I had Wings West side skirts. I had a crazy 17 speaker um, setup that I had. It was Rockford Fosgate amplifiers in the back. I had a Rockford Fosgate uh, subwoofer for all of those of you who know that kind of stuff. I had neons in the vehicle as well, blue lighting, so background lighting. Um, I had custom made enclosures for the speakers. I had uh, 15 inch Anke wheels, if that's the correct way to say it. Um, tinted glass, uh, the vehicle was lowered. The front and rear bumpers were painted the same color as the car. And as you could tell, uh, the paint was absolutely glowing. So it was in a horrible state when I got it because the uh, vehicle was already uh, close to seven years old. And it was a rental vehicle that a, a local Toyota dealership had to uh, lend a lender car to lend to its customers. So uh, yeah, needless to say, it was pretty dirty and the paint was not in that good of a condition. So I brought it back to life with my passion for detailing. I put those racing stripes on it. I mean, uh, yeah, again, guys, I was 16 years old. So bear with me, um, even leather seats with uh, contrast stitching and piping that match the color of the vehicle. And uh, so, yeah, I found that pretty interesting. Next, um, my at 23 years of age, that's when I bought my first new car. So that was my second car. And it was a Nissan Sentra SER Spec V. So that was the beefed up 2.5 liter engine from the Nissan Altima. So 180 horsepower, roughly 180 foot pounds of torque. 
uh, six-speed manual transmission, bigger wheels, uh, beefed up body. That one was volcanic orange. That was a special color uh, that was available in 2004. I was super proud. Uh, imagine that, 23 years old, your first new car. I was ecstatic. And so, of course, I take great, great care of it. I continued the uh, modifications on that one, but I went more for the sleeper look. So uh, from the exterior, it looked pretty much stock, but I changed uh, the tires to some Yokohama a AVS Sport back in the day, if I remember. Uh, Brembo brakes, so discs and uh, brake pads were HKS, uh, were Hawk HKS brake pads or something like that. I know they were Hawk. Um, I had a Gretti uh, catback exhaust system, uh, tinted windows, of course, an insane sound system, but this time for sound quality, because I was part of the IASCA challenge. That is the uh, world organization that takes care of uh, the sound quality competitions, so SQL, uh, which I won many first places, um, all the way up to a final in New York, which I took first place. So that was pretty cool. Uh, it was an Alpine um, Type X or X series speakers, which eventually were changed for Focal three ways. So tweeters, mid-range and mid-bass drivers. I had a JL audio subwoofer and a custom enclosure, custom amplifier rack with JL audio amplifiers, one for the sub, one for the speakers, so on and so forth. Uh, I had Tane uh, coilovers on that car. Um, I had an Apexi SAFC2 fuel management system. Uh, I mean, a bunch of modifications that were done. The car was pretty cool. And of course, well, it was detailed to perfection. Um, then I moved on to a 2009 Mazda 6 GT, again, brand new. I was 28 years of age. I wanted a bigger sedan because at six feet, three inches tall, well, I needed more room. So I went for that. And at the time in 2009, for me, it was the best looking sedan in its category. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. It was a white color with a black interior. Um, again, leather seats in there, the, uh, the bigger 18 inch wheels on the GT model. And so it was, uh, yeah, it was a pretty fun time with that Mazda. Next, uh, in, uh, I was 31 years of age when I got my brand new 2013 Audi S5. So this was my first foray into German luxury performance vehicles. So the S5 is a coupe. It had a uh, three liter engine, so a V6 with a supercharger, 333 horsepower, 325 foot pounds of torque. I had the two-tone black and red leather interior. It had the uh, optional 19 inch wheels on that. It was glacier white. So it was my uh, second white vehicle but uh, this one was pretty special because it had a lot of power, uh, the luxury, the finish. And I mean, again, at 31 years of age, uh, that was another achievement in my life. I always worked super hard to be able to get to um, buy those vehicles. So uh, that was a, another great achievement. Next, uh, when I was 34 years of age, so in 2015, I got a brand new 2015 BMW 435i X-Drive Grand Coupe. Uh, M Sport Edition, so that's a mouthful, but essentially it was the fully loaded top model of the Grand Coupe. In French, we call it Grand Coupe. Um, and so it was a four-door sedan with the coupe style, which is very popular nowadays. Uh, and so it had the uh, popular three-liter inline six-cylinder engine from BMW. So it was a single turbo, but twin turbo power. And it was pushing 335 horsepower, 332 foot-pounds of torque at the time, because it had both M performance packages. So 19-inch optional M performance wheels, bigger brakes, of course, uh, more power through the engine. So instead of the 300 horsepower that's standard, I had 335. Uh, it had the uh, ZF uh, eight-speed transmission, and uh, yeah, that was, uh, I had uh, done a test drive of the BMW because uh, I was coming out from an Audi S5 and I just found the, uh, the sportiness to be another level. And it, it was a good blend, I mean, of sport and luxury. So I really enjoyed it. Um, that one was a, a gray color, mineral gray, I think was the name of the paint color. And that was the first car that you guys saw in my first videos in 2016 when I started my YouTube channel. So I'm sure you guys are ve very familiar with it. I uh, really, really enjoyed that car. And uh, that brings me on to my latest achievement. So at the age of 37, so in 2018, I bought a brand new 2018 BMW M550i. So that is the five series, almost top of the line because there's the M5 that's above it. So the M550i has the same basic engine as the M5. It's just a bit detuned, but still very powerful. So we're talking about a twin turbo 4.4 liter V8 engine. Uh, it has two turbos. This one here 
here pushes close to 480 horsepower and 480 foot-pounds of torque. It has optional 20-inch M Performance wheels. I uh, ticked every box for the option, so I have the optional Bowers & Wilkins sound system that has uh, that is lit in the night with LEDs. Uh, of course, inside I have the comfort seats, which is the Napa leather, so the upgraded leather as well. Uh, that car is a big car, so it's a big mid-size sedan. So I wanted a, a bit more comfort than my previous 4 Series BMW. And uh, this one ticked all the boxes. Um, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour or 0 to 60 miles per hour, measured in 3.7 seconds. So very, very fast. I'm sure you saw a video where I brought my car to the racetrack to do some drag racing. Uh, it absolutely killed. Zero losses that night against my opponents. Uh, and so I had a lot of fun with it. And of course, it's a big part of my detail channel on YouTube because I like to take great care of it and test a bunch of different products uh, for you guys to see. So um, that's my favorite car, of course, to this date. And it's my biggest achievement uh, because it's quite an expensive car. So in Canadian dollars, for those of you who are wondering, we're talking about 104,000 um, Canadian dollars. That's a little over 80,000 US dollars, if my memory serves me well with the currency exchange. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I mean, I worked really hard to get to this point and hopefully you guys enjoy all the fun videos that I and the content that I create with that car. So that's it for my, um, my vehicles that I had in my life. And as you guys can tell, well, yeah, I'm a car guy. I think it's pretty obvious, not only through my channels and the cars that I have owned, but now a little secret that I have never shared with you guys before. Uh, my early days of car journalism. So how did that start? Because I was an automotive journalist for a couple of years. So if I uh, take this magazine here, which was a popular magazine in the province where I live in Quebec, Canada, this was called Tuning, Audio and Performance. So when I had my Nissan Sentra SCR Spec V, which was this car here, it had been featured in this tuning magazine because the, uh, the people saw me in a competition for the uh, sound system that I had and they fell in love with the vehicle, so they wanted to feature it in an article in the magazine. Uh, and so they spoke about me in that article and, well, I decided to meet with the editor, which his name was Cal Nadeau. He's a uh, Quebec automotive journalist that has been known for years and he's also a race driver. So very popular here and he saw the level of passion that I had for vehicles and, uh, well, tuning back in the day, of course, modifications. And he knew the, uh, well, he saw through my speaking that I had a, a certain talent and a big mouth for talking and I was quite eloquent. So he decided to offer me a position. So it was a side gig as an automotive journalist. And so I got a, a uh, position at Tuning Audio and Performance. And so this is, I did a few um, articles in many magazines with them. So this one here was my first article that I had done. So we look inside and it was about a Nissan 240SX that had a, a Skyline GTR RB26 DETT. Uh, twin turbo engine so that was the most powerful engine for the nissan skyline at the time the person transplanted this in this uh, car so it had over 500 horsepower 500 foot pounds of torque and so if we have a look here you're going to see my name appear here so hopefully it can focus so that was me pandelis moskopoulos and so i decided to start writing some articles and i absolutely fell in love so this was the uh, the tuning days and eventually that led to more serious stuff and I ended up in 2014 at the culmination of the um, journalistic experience for me, writing in one of the most popular car review books at the time. So this is the uh, Monoto 2014. This was a French uh, book. It was a guide for buying new vehicles. So basically a review of every new model that was out there. And here again, if I show you the rear, let's focus in. You can see here, Pandelis. Moskopoulos, that's me. So I was one of the uh, collaborators and writers for the book, and I wrote many, many articles in there, including this cool one on the uh, McLaren MP4-12C back in the day. So uh, yeah, I loved cars. I loved reviewing cars. I loved detailing cars, so that was pretty awesome. And again, just to see my name in such, right here, just to see my name in such an awesome and very important publication, because this was by La Presse, and La Presse, or La Presse, was one of the uh, biggest media outlets in uh, journalistic forms uh, back in the day. So uh, that's it. I was reviewing vehicles, test driving vehicles. I mean, everything in my life 
uh, is uh, surrounding cars. I love cars. I love detailing, anything about that. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions for any of the cars that I drove or any other cool question that you guys might have, maybe for a future video, if I uh, forgot to answer some, make sure you let me know in the comment section under the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video about who is Pan, my life story. Hopefully now you guys got to know me a bit more. Uh, if you want to continue to learn more about car detailing, so products, equipment, tips, tricks, and techniques, make sure that you hit the subscribe button that's found under this video. And that way you guys will subscribe to my channel and never miss my future videos. Also, while you're down there, make sure to click the bell icon. That's the notifications icon. And that, that way you'll be notified every time I upload a video to YouTube and you can be among the first to watch my latest videos. Uh, guys, well, I'm very blessed to have you. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know. An easy way for me to know will be, why don't you write hashtag Pan's Life? So P-A-N-S-L-I-F-E. Drop that hashtag in the comment section under the video and I'll know that you made it all the way till the end. So hashtag Pan's Life. And guys, like I always say, in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one.